magical YouTube channel. I can't believe I'm so old. I, when I was telling somebody I had started it, I said, yeah, I'm using the YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm glad you got your kid okay. I'm glad you, um, and you said you got your book too? Yeah, the second edition. That's perfect. No, and, and if the cover's worn a little bit, you know, who cares? It's the inside information we, we want anyway. So I'm glad you got that. That's, yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, today... We're recording this so that other people can watch it too. But what I wanted to do was go over a little bit about the wire thing. Ask how you're doing with the house. And uh, if you have any questions, answer them. And talk a little bit about the annotated bibliography deal. Um, usually it's nice to have more than just one person in the meeting, but I hope you don't feel too lonely. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, I, I'm hoping just to go like 45 minutes and that's all. And these Thursday meetings, that that's that's all pretty much what it will be. It looks like for the rest of the semester, oh, by the way, the first code word is up. Uh, it looks like on June 7th, I have a meeting like um, at, on the Monday that is like at 8.15 or 8.30, something like that. And so we may just have an abbreviated meeting and then move it to another time slot. And then I also need to do another meeting outside of the regular thing that may just be recorded and people can get in if they want, but that I'll, have, I'll tell everybody about that next week. But I am gonna do a screen share really quick and show the just walk through the wire sculpture thing because I'm sure everybody has questions about that before I, when I get to that let's see how have you been doing with the the house is that working out okay yeah my my house is like um, uh, kind of minimalist and just um, just like kind of small and not like really pretty but i got it done i think as long as it does interesting things with the light that's probably good um houses that i that have been turned in in the past that have not been too successful is when somebody doesn't put a base and a roof on it or when somebody just puts like a facade and that's all but i think that something that you can have that will interact with light that you can manipulate yeah, I mean, by, by that, I mean, put it in different settings. I think that would be just fine. As long as it's sturdy enough to hold up. Now, can you see the, my, uh, the wire test sculpture screen? Yeah. Okay. All right. Now, for this, this is out of module two. And um, the... This is probably they're going to be the first time that anybody works with wire, and that's completely fine. The idea of this first part is take maybe at the most two hours and just fiddle and play with the wire until you get a little bit more comfortable with it. And uh, the whole point of it is you know, watch these two short tutorials, one seven minutes, one is four, a little over four minutes. Watch those and then get a pair of gloves. I would, I would strongly recommend pretty much any type of cheapo garden gloves and you can get them at Walmart or Harbor Freight, any place like that. I would not use dishwashing gloves. Those would get cut by the ends of the wire. But the reason why, there, there's a couple reasons why you have the, the gloves. One is that this wire is coated with stuff to keep it from rusting and that coating gets onto your hands and it, it's it just nasty. The other is that the ends of the wire after you start cutting it can uh, scratch you and sometimes cut you um, if you're not careful. So I want, I want people to be really careful. And I would also recommend 
there's no goggles in the kits, but it, it's not going to hurt to wear glasses or something over your eyes to protect them as well as the wires flopping around. But the point of this is to sculpt a couple little things based on household items that you find around your apartment or where you work or whatever. And for each one, just uh, make a quick little sketch of it in the, the wire as three dimensional as possible. This says uh, set a timer for two hours and start to work. What I would recommend is make the object at least six inches long on one side. Anything smaller is going to be really frustrating. Use the pliers that you've got in your kit. Use other whatever tools, other tools you can find. And if you get something done before the two hours is up, find another object and do it again. The reason why is that two hours is significant because that's how long it really takes for things to start clicking for most people. If you just go through and do it for 15 minutes, that's fine. But I would do several other sculptures that take 15 minutes as well. The only problem with doing that is that you'll use up the wire that you have in the kit and you won't have enough to do uh, the main piece. I would I would probably try to limit this to about um, six to ten feet of wire at the most and try to add detail and make it um, just keep working on it for that two hours. And then you also need to document it which is just I would set it up against a solid background like against the wall Sometimes people will put like a, a white piece of paper on a table and push that against the wall and take a photo of the, the piece like that, and that's fine to do. Other times people have taken butcher paper, taped the front edge down against the table so it's out of the camera view, and then tape the back edge up so you have uh, against the wall so you have kind of a curve in the background. And then you see that top left animal type thing uh, that's how that one was photographed and you can kind of see the curve of paper behind it. Uh, you can also use the sheet that if you uh, iron the sheet first. That's you can do a good job with that too, but I think paper is the easiest. And then to get credit for this, you just take a photo of it like that and then uh, submit the photo. Now I'm pretending that uh, you are all of everybody in the class. So does anyone have any questions? Um, no. OK. Does that seem pretty straightforward then? Yeah. OK. One, one question that I've gotten from a couple people is regarding the work logs. The work logs are for each specific module that they're within. So the work log for module 7.A is just for the work done, usually about two and a half to three hours on going through that list of 75 artists. The work log for module one for the house and the photography is just for all of the elements that go into module one. And that includes uh, watching the tutorials during the artist research, um, writing the paper as well as uh, doing the the project that's assigned as well and so for this one uh, module two the work log will consist of the readings the time you spent on the readings the time you do the wire test sculpture and read the or watch these videos as well as doing both this and uh, the major sculpture not major i'm sorry the the principal sculpture of the project so let's see um i'm going to I'm going to go to the next screen and if would you tell me Jacob if it does not show up on the screen share? I'm sorry, that's not the right one. Did you do you see this? Yeah. Okay. All right. It should say wire sculpture at the top. Now, on this Yeah. Okay. Um have you seen those 3D printer pens where you can actually draw like 3D things with the pen. Yeah. 
Well, that that is not quite, but kind of the mindset of what we're doing on this. Um, the what I would like is pe to, for people to do uh, one of the exercises I'll have students do as well as a contour drawing, and then try to make a, the contour drawing out of wire, and then manipulate that until it's three dimensional. But I think it's a really good idea to start with doing sketches, scribble sketches like this, where you build up the body with just overlapping lines. The reason why I think that this is a good idea is that these start looking like what the wire is going to look like or a similar way. When we talk about time on this, this should be significantly more time than the, the practice one. And I'm thinking for most people, the practice one will honestly be about an hour and a half to two hours. This one will probably be seven and a half to eight and a half hours. So you, you'll go over 10 hours working time for the entire module a little bit. And um, I, I hope that's not a problem for anybody. But uh, yeah, if you take into account the videos you watch and the, the artist review, you may go over. And for this, honestly, that, that's, that's perfectly fine. There's a lot of, we have some examples here that we've shown of uh, previous student work. And I, I wanted to talk about those more in, in just a minute. But as, as you work on the piece, there's a couple things to keep in mind. One is that wire that you have is pretty sturdy, and I would use that primarily for the support grid for the, for the piece. And remember that the size we're looking at is 15 to inches to about two feet in the longest dimension, which may seem kind of big, but once you get started working on this, um, it's for most people, it doesn't feel like it's it's a problem at all to get to that 15 inches. I, that's that's the minimum. And uh, I have had students before who have tried to turn in their practice pieces that are supposed to be smaller as a finished work. And I've done this long enough that I know the gauge of the wire and how big it looks in a photograph. So it's pretty easy to say uh, tell what the scale is. But there's a couple other things to keep it uh, to think consider about as well. You can go to a hardware store and get a uh, wire that you can manipulate that's silver or copper. You can go and get uh, really cheap jewelry style wire from Walmart or Hobby Lobby. And what's neat about that is if you get a different color, you can do your primary contours and your base grid to support the weight of the sculpture with that heavier black wire and then use the silver or the copper or the jewelry wire to do little networks of lines and add more interest to it contour wise or just uh, decoration and pattern wise. One person last semester made an octopus and uh, some octopuses when they are um, swimming around will have dots and different patterns on them and for those patterns he made a grid and just did um, almost like quilt squares with different colors of wire. And it ended up looking incredibly cool. So on here, the examples of the drawing are all animals, but they do not need to be animals by any means. Okay, here we, we have a teddy bear. I, I really like this teddy bear. It, it feels very disturbing to me. A couple of things I like about it are where the stitching on the, where the uh, different pieces of the, of what you imagine the cloth to make the head of the original teddy bear where that stitching is, the person made the wire look almost like barbed wire. So it kind of mimics that a little bit. And then the arms were really built up with all these rings of wire so that it almost feels like a sausage. And this, this artist did not make separate rings for that. He actually did make a coil and use that coil for the arms. And then I, I like these shoes. What I, uh, we, I had another student who did also did a pair of shoes. And what they did is they added more wire to make a more decorative sole pattern. And then they also did different things along the edge uh, with uh, different kinds of gauges and colors of wire to kind of put some design on the edge. And that was, that was really fascinating to see as well. There we have 
Popeye on the left there. I, I think that that one's kind of interesting. It, it really feels like there's they were strongly influenced by Alexander Calder. And then we have, I think it's, I think it's an ad ad from one of the Star Wars movies right here. And this thing actually does stand on those two legs, which I thought was pretty dang cool. Then we here on the right, we have kind of this, it feels almost like a floppy sock horse kind of thing. And I think that that's kind of a fun thing to do. And on the left, we have this bird in a cage. And what's interesting about that is the cage wires are very, very simple. And then the person has spent time putting detail on it. So you can really see the detail at the bottom, that ring around it. And then the bird is fleshed out a little bit. And this would be an opportunity to use some of that jewelry wire as well to kind of maybe put some decorative patterning on the bird. It doesn't have to look like any real bird. But it might be interesting to do, like the one person did quilt squares on the octopus. That might be interesting to do for this bird. Uh, the second code word is quark. Like one of the smallest particles of matter. Then this bottom one, this thing is over two feet long. And it is really interesting. Uh, the different lines are, are really fascinating. On something like this, I think it's also interesting to think of different ideas like uh, what has the fish eaten? Would it be interesting to put like smaller fish inside of this? I say that because one per one student saw this and thought, oh, I can do I can do more. And they started by making this little teeny tiny goldfish. And then they built a bigger fish around that and a bigger fish around that until they had uh, four fish all inside of each other inside of a larger fish each fish was relatively simple but each fish they did a different uh, style of line quality and uh, or a different color of wire and it was it was really really fascinating to see that now um, one thing we talked about is each project should be about 10 hours each of these modules one through six should be about 10 hours for anybody that goes over 11 hours, they do get extra credit points uh, for the time that they spend. And I think for something like this, it would be really easy to get lost in creating this with, with wire. Uh, now, Jacob, do you have any questions about these two assignments for this module? Um, no. Okay, some of the questions that come up are, what if I run out of wire in the kit? There's about 50 feet of wire in the kit, and for most people, that, that's going to be quite a bit. I think there's 50, it might only be 30, but still, that, that's an awful lot of wire. There are a couple places that you can go in the area to get additional wire. Um, what what places come to the top of your head, Jacob, about uh, where you might be able to find some wire that you could use for this project? Um, probably uh, Lowe's or Home Depot. Yeah, I, I think that, that. Sorry. Uh, what? I'm sorry, I, I spoke over you. Oh, no, I didn't say anything. I just. So Lowe's or Home Depot? I think that those are both really good ideas. Um, in Lowe's, the wire, the coiled wire, is at the end of the aisle that has all the, the miscellaneous screws and uh, uh, metal stock. I, I don't know where it is at Home Depot, but that's a really good idea, and I know that you can get uh, like smaller coils as well. <laughs> And a Hobby Lobby, they have um, a similar size wire that I believe is copper that you can get. And there's only a few bucks for, for the copper one. That would be really fascinating to work with as well. And then um, at Walmart, if you go to the craft areas, you can get, for just a few bucks, a selection of multicolored, really thin wire that's very easy to use. The reason why that might be interesting is I have had people 
before that tried to do flowers for this and that can fail miserably honestly but it can also be fascinating uh, one student that I thought did a really good job is that each flower that they did and they did about eight or nine flowers was a different style of flower with different kinds of leaves different kinds of petals and for the petals and for the center they used the jewelry wire to wrap around the larger gauge black wire and give it a little bit of color and a little bit of distinction and then you go down the stem and it just remained the black wire and then the leaves are made with the black wire as well that was fascinating somebody else did a series of moss and butterflies and i think again it was like four or five moss or butterflies and each of them were at the end of about a 14 inch piece of wire that was straight and what she ended up doing was making the outline of the wings with the black wire going over those in different patterns with the jewelry wire that she picked up at walmart and each one each set of wings was unique to that butterfly and then at the end of it she took her pliers and twisted the very ends of the um that 14 inch wire on each of the butterflies they, she twisted all those ends together so that the wire the butterflies could kind of um flop around a little bit and it made it a little bit more dynamic of a piece and i thought that was really that was an interesting way to address it and, and it was cool because every time you looked at the piece you know or or touched it one of the butterflies would start moving everything would start flopping around and it was uh, a little bit more di dynamic than many people expected now i one thing i did want to talk about i'm going to take off the actually i'm going to take out the screen share for just a little bit and i'm going to see if i can find the annotated bibliography thing the annotated bibliography I, I put on there, even though it's not due until I think another week or so, um, I wanted people to look at that and start thinking about that from the standpoint of one of the artists that they selected. When I asked everybody to do the, okay, I'm getting, I'm opening that up now. And I'm going to do screen share again so you can just see my little deal here. All right. Can you see this uh, with the annotated bibliography at the top? Yes. OK. All right. Good. The, um, the research project is going to be essentially a um, PowerPoint with about eight or ten slides and it's only supposed to be five or eight minutes long but you're just sharing what you've learned about the artist how they're different from you and why their art resonates with you and uh, if you do this annotated bibliography well then you can essentially do a slide for each of these eight ci citations in your annotated bibliography and just tell or narrate what you uh, wrote for each of the citations and that would take up that would give you plenty of time and that would be the easiest way to do the um, that presentation and then after all that you're, you're going to write just a five paragraph at the very end you'll write a five paragraph uh, observation on why you picked this artist, what made them stand out to you, and uh, what you learned from them, essentially. And I'll, I'll put that up next week as well, so you guys, so everybody can see that. But the due dates on these are spaced out, so you work on a, a bit at a time throughout the course of the term. For these eight sources, um, Jacob, I'm sorry, you're the only one here, so I'm asking you again. Would you mind? terribly sharing a couple of the identifiers that you listed um, or if you don't want to share your own you can just make up a couple of identifiers that you listed before you start going through that 75 artist list 
Um, so, like, um, basically, like what we did, we chose the artists and the things that are different about them. Right, and uh, the first part of it was just writing down 10 self-identifiers so you'd have that list to go from when you're looking at artists that are different from you. And I'm just wondering if you would mind uh, sharing a couple of those identifiers. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I chose uh, Frank Gehry, and uh, I was really interested in him because... Um, for one, he's 92 years old and still living. And uh, and he also uh, grew up with uh, Jewish parents. And he he's also more of an architect. And uh, he applies a lot of the... He applies a lot of uh, the sculpture techniques into his architecture. So, like, um, like he did the he did design he did this design for this one museum. I can't remember the name of it, but like, um, it it's like um, the outside of the museum is all wavy. And just very like very surreal looking, but it's a fully functional building. And yeah, I was interested in his style of architecture. Like, thank you very much. I really appreciate that because you have hit the nail on the head. Exactly what I'm hoping for with this assignment, where you've identi identified somebody whose art resonated with you. But there are several um, aspects about the individual who is not like you at all. Because I'm, I'm making the assumption from earlier times that we've uh, chatted that you are not 92 years old. Am I right? <laughs> Absolutely. Actually <laughs> just turned 22. So, uh, so he's 70 years older than you. No, and I, I think that's excellent. This is somebody that you would probably never find in your ordinary social circles but it's somebody whose artwork really resonates with you. And I, that's exciting because that's exactly the kind of artist that I'm hoping people connect with. One thing I think is fascinating about Frank Gehry is, if I remember right, his career did not really take off until he was in his mid-50s. So I, I think he's absolutely amazing. And he's one of the, the architects that really embrace it. All architects are sculptors, whether or not they admit it. But he really embraces that. I, I'm really happy that you're, you see that so readily and respond to it. As you go through uh, the sources, as you find um, eight, eight sources to cite in this annotated bibliography, I would really appreciate it. Um, well, you really need to keep in the back of your mind those observations like um, Jacob made about Frank Gehry. You know, why is he different from him? Why? Or how is he different from him? What makes the art resonate? Those two things I really want you to keep in your mind and allow those two um, questions to, to uh, inform how you write about each of these citations. So the, the MLA format, uh, that will work with pretty much any source you cite, from a personal interview all the way to a written article. And one thing I wanted to, to stress about the written articles is that not all written sources are equally valid. What I mean by that is several years ago, I was interviewed and the article was put out and showed up in an Egyptian newspaper. And I thought, well, that's really exciting. Over the next two months, I found that there were eight more articles that were released from everywhere from Al Jazeera to uh, little teeny newspapers in uh, Turkey. And I, I got kind of excited and I was wondering why I hadn't heard from anybody. And then I looked and realized that all, eight, all of those new articles were just copies of that original Egyptian article, Egyptian newspaper article, and they were just, uh, the titles were changed essentially. And it was the exact same article. 
also think about this if you are trying to do learn about environmental or environmentalism you go to a website that is sponsored by bp oil and you go to a website that is sponsored by the sierra club they may both be uh, very informative but the bias of BP oil is going to be significantly different than the bias of the Sierra Club. So keep in mind uh, who, who is writing the article, whether the article is actually a copy or redistribution from somewhere else. And that's, that's not necessarily plagiarism. It's a journal, um, journalism sources become more like uh, information spreaders a lot of the times where an article is repeated and redistributed over and over again. So just be mindful that you're not using the same article. And uh, a source on your artist may be uh, last semester one person was able to contact the artist and get a personal interview. You could uh, watch a video that is a walkthrough of one of the artist uh, gallery shows or an exhibit of some of the work that they've done, uh, somebody critiquing the, the body of their work or perhaps a, a particular series. Um, Damien Hurst, there are some videos about specific shows that he's done as well as specific sculptures that he's done as well as the artist himself. And all, all of those are completely valid. When you go through this MLA video, uh, what is important about it is to make sure that your citation will get whoever comes across the citation to exactly the source that you used. That's the most important thing. And if you have questions, if you're doing like a personal interview or it's you're recording uh, just a personal experience that you've had with the artist because you met them yourself, uh, there, there are ways to properly um, document that as well. And under each citation, the five to eight sentences I want you to write and most people will do either one long paragraph or two uh, shorter paragraphs with one paragraph maybe having three sentences and the other four sentences something like that. It should be explanatory enough so that in two years from now when you completely forget about this assignment you'll come back and when you read those sentences you realize oh yeah that's or you'll remember oh yeah that's what that source was talking about and that's why it was so interesting to me. Uh, one of the the worst examples of this that I've seen is person sent in their entire annotated bibliography without any complete sentences. And um, each of the phrases that they used had maybe five to nine words in it. And the phrases were something like, um, if it, I, I can't remember who the artist was, but the phrase was talked about a show. Or um, talked about a piece outside of a stadium or find out found out he's from such and such a town that doesn't do anything if if the article is eight or nine paragraphs long and it talks about the process that um, Doho Se goes through making one of his fabric ghost houses then you could say you in your uh, five day sentences you could describe well this is in relation to Doho Su's uh, exhibit that he did this time frame in this area and it goes in depth about his work process what fascinated me is how careful he is in all in all these elements how metic meticulous and uh, as an example he, he did this and this and this for uh, the fabric ghost of his New York apartment and he, he says that one of the reasons why he does this is because it helps him to keep the memories alive. And you could uh, clarify that a little bit, but that gives you at least five sentences and it get a really clear understanding of what the article is without copying the article. Does, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. And, and so for, for Frank Gehry, as you're going through each of those citations that you're finding think about you know how is he different 
and for maybe the the he won a ma massive award just a short while ago and i think if i remember right he is the oldest person in the history of that award to receive it and um or he's the oldest person to receive it in the history of the the award and that would be an interesting article to to find and and focus on because one thing that is exciting about him for example is that in our culture populist media seems to devalue people once they get past a certain age and that's when frank gary really started blossoming and we can find that kind of uh development in pretty much any artist with the different uh identifiers that i've asked everybody to to look for you know what is what makes them different than you and what uh about their art resonates with you and you can all you can find and pick out those elements of pretty much every citation that you come across now one question i do have is every once in a while somebody will pick an artist and they won't be able to come up with eight citations and the question is well what do i do because i picked an artist that is basically a dud that's one of the reasons why this is the second uh, assignment in that the sequence of four for this the research project if you don't find the eight, eight citations stop what you're doing don't do any more work on them don't do the annotations or anything just let me know and switch to a different artist that you can find eight citations on i don't want you to uh, keep working do a lot of work and find out that you can't finish the assignment simply because there aren't enough there isn't enough information about the artist out there well so and, and in that case just let me know and you can post on the, the discussion board again saying hey, i discovered there wasn't enough information about my artist so now i'm doing so and so and that is perfectly fine all right the third code word for today is left as in leftovers not left-handed like that makes any difference at all Now, uh, down here and the lower down in this annotated bibliography assignment page, you can see there's two examples. And um, Al Faro, the, the first example is kind of a short one. And on that one, I would add a couple examples of specific works that you saw in the art showcase and just describe them briefly. And that would be great for that. And then in number two, that's kind of what I did with the second paragraph here. Just talking about just specific examples from uh, the ones shown in this Wrath and Reverence uh, re um, reference, uh, Mosque Reliquary, Menorah 6, and Mausoleum 2, uh, and then just describing why I thought that they were uh, good examples. And then I also uh, tried to highlight full marks are given and then the the beat points as to why or how uh, full marks will be given i i think notice that on this we do say properly cited M in mla format to be totally honest i care a little bit less about the format and i care a lot more about what you're writing in the five to eight sentences and i know none of you are taking this class because you are professional English majors, but do pay attention please to um, spelling and punctuation and do your best to write things um, so that they're uh, grammatically correct, at least as far as um, uh, usage goes. I, I, I don't want to put it out as a challenge. I haven't yet received an annotated bibliography where it's all written with the the, the texting shorthand, so please do not do that. <laughs> but uh, I, the caliber of writing that I have seen for the most part out of uh, students at UVU in the art program is a, a significantly better than I would have expected. So um, I'm just saying do the best you can. And uh, the, the final grade will be given at, at the end of the, the term. But if there's anything that's missing and you don't get all 60 points, 
you can tweak whatever you need to and turn it in again until and just repeat that process until the end of finals. So, um, and most people their first try will get um, pretty much within the A minus A range on this. So you guys generally will do a really good job. So I'm going to turn off screen share now. All right. Okay, uh, Jacob, do you have any questions uh, about these things? Yeah, um, for the annotated bibliography, we have to write five to eight sentences for each of the sources. Right. And um, that will be kind of a synopsis of the article or video that you watched. And then um, just a sentence or two of your thoughts about it or an example of of uh, the overall feel of the article. Like, for example, um, if one of your articles is about a show by Damien Hurst and you're, you're talking about what the uh, critics said about the, sh the uh, show, then you can also that may only take up three sentences, but then you can also add another sentence or two about each of two or three objects that you saw in the show and just describe them and say, well, I really like this or I didn't like this. It seems like a typical Damien Hurst or maybe this was uh, not much of a stretch for him and just was not very exciting. And so, um, but yeah, five to eight sentences for each of them. Okay. Yeah, that's that's my only question. Okay. All right. And they, they can seem kind of daunting. But this is preparation for the um, PowerPoint presentation that you'll do later. And if you get these five to eight sentences down and you're comfortable and happy with them, it'll make that presentation a cinch. So yeah, uh, do the best you can. And I, I will write notes for everybody uh, to hopefully um, answer any questions that they have about their individual um, artists and their individual work. Any other comments or observations about today? No, that that's about it. All right. OK, great. I would like to put in a plug, please. Um, I have heard from pretty much everybody. No, from everybody about getting their kit. So everybody has their kit. I have only heard from seven people about get, uh, receiving their book. So as soon as you get your book, please email me and let me know or you can message me on canvas somebody said that that's a thing i am not even aware of it um, but uh, send that in and then for attendance uh, just email me the code words for the uh, meetings that you did not attend when we um, did them live and uh, it looks like the first one most people have sent me those code words uh, but uh, please do the rest as soon as you can and you can just have them on in the background while you're doing your work but that's all i have for today if anybody has any questions email me and like i said we can set up a special meeting too if several people have the same kind of question and until then i i have scheduled meetings for mondays and thursday mornings for the rest of our term together um, please look out for that uh, in your microsoft teams and if you have any questions email me and until then I hope you guys have an absolutely wonderful weekend and get lots of stuff done. All right, we'll see you later. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming.